swimming pool. The water shoes were designed for open water, mainly uh, protected water like uh, small rivers, ponds, and lakes, and this kind of thing, or whatever. But uh, I walked the English Channel, which is 22 miles of open ocean. We walked the Panama Canal, 55 miles of, uh, well, it, it got into a large lake there, Gatun Lake there in Panama. And we got into some narrow mountain, uh, bit of a rivers, uh, and, and some all kinds of things. So what we want to do, we're going to build shoes that can move out into larger areas, wider areas, wider waters, and we have to compensate for a lot of things that's out there wind and rain and current and, and, and all these things that, that's associated with uh, being out in open water. So we're going to turn the shoes, we're going to turn the camera around a little bit, but we just wanted to show you, yes, just beyond the tree line there is the South China Sea, and we're a bit of, in, a, in a bit of a bay so you can see the, uh, the line on the other side there, you know, moving around. So in the top of, upper part, you know, just about up here, you know, so you can see all that moving around. And we're designing, like I said, for open water. And we want to keep, we want to keep that, we don't keep that in mind. The next thing we want to discuss is um, movement. How you get the shoes to move. Now, we've noticed in the films, which we, we well, on YouTube, we looked at you guys, and uh, a lot of the colleges, a lot of universities, a lot of the high schools and uh, I guess a lot of these are some of engineering programs and projects and all that. Um, they are showing veins and scoops and buckets and, and, and little clips and, and slips under the shoes, scales and scalings under the shoes to move the shoes. And this is not, this is not correct. And the main reason it's not correct is because on any aquatic device, what you need, on any aquatic device, what you need is a smooth surface on the underside. 